I'm going to report on just some of the some of the work that we do. Um, we're real interested in measuring a whole variety of, of, of air pollutants, both gases and aerosols. Uh, mercury is included as one of the parameters. Um, some of the stuff we've been doing recently involves trying to understand how mercury cycles in the environment. We're looking at natural sources and kind of the controls on the re-emissions of mercury after it's being deposited. Uh, but today what I'm going to focus in on are just the, uh, the trends in, uh, in atmospheric mercury. We're going to talk about the emission sources. Uh, we're going to talk about how those sources have changed over time. And we're going to look at the relationships between the changes in the emissions and both wet and dry deposition. Um, I don't really have long-term records of dry deposition. Um, so I'm going to look at ambient air concentrations as a surrogate for dry deposition. If I were to organize this talk around a key question or an objective, um, what I want to show you today is how these reduction in emissions from power plants have influenced or not influenced the wet and dry deposition. It's really a simple, uh, I took a very simple approach to pull this together. I took existing data uh, from power plant emissions that you can get in the EPA uh, database. And I just compared the emission patterns very simply to both the wet and dry deposition patterns for collection sites in western Maryland for, uh, for wet deposition and atmospheric mercury speciation and uh, other sites in Maryland for the wet deposition uh, portion of this. So here we are um, at our site, Frostburg. Uh, our lab's in Frostburg. Uh, you go over about seven miles going to Garrett County, and you'll see our atmospheric monitoring station up there. Um, it is at the it is at our drinking water supply, the Piney Creek Reservoir. Um, it's a great place to study mercury, as you can see why. Our research site is right here. We're surrounded by huge sources of mercury. Okay, um, if you look at the red circles, the larger the circle, the greater the source. Um, the red circles indicate the coal-fired power plants that release mercury into the atmosphere. Each of these are the mercury sources in kilograms per year. And these were from data uh, around uh, the year 2000. Um, so you can see where we are here, we're surrounded by a whole variety of really strong, important mercury sources. I'll show you the wind patterns in just a moment from some data that were actually collected on site. But the bottom line there is we see the majority of the time we see winds coming from the west-northwest. So we see this segment of the, uh, of the power plants. If you were to look at the emissions from the surrounding states, Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, including Maryland, for perspective, these are the uh, national ranks um, of all the U.S. states in terms of their total mercury emissions. Ohio ranked number two in 2010. Pennsylvania is number three in 2010. West Virginia is number seven. So we're surrounded by three of the top ten mercury emitters in the country. Uh, Virginia is 27. Uh, Maryland is. It's best to be as you know low in the list as possible. It's good that we're 39. But we don't see our emissions in the western part of the state, unfortunately. And these are just the emissions in, in pounds for each of those states. The wind patterns that I was alluding to is in the third panel here. Um, north is zero degrees, okay. Um, 90 degrees would be right here. That would be the winds from the east. This is a frequency distribution. So the, the, larger, the, uh, the larger the panel, uh, the more frequent you see uh, wind from those directions. You can see two peaks here. This one here is from the southeast. So when that generally occurs, um, in the summertime, you get a lot of winds coming in from the southeast. Um, this right here are winds from the west-northwest. Uh, fall and winter especially, especially the winter. The winter winds are real strong coming out of the west-northwest. So we'll see these pollutants being transported into our area because we're downwind of those major sources. We noticed this back when we started making these measurements. Our data set goes back to 2005 for the atmospheric mercury species. Um, it was John's insight to, and, and some others to put up some monitoring stations so we could look at the impacts of pollution controls on power plants. 
Okay, so three or four years from now, we should have pollution controls on power plants um, that are supposed to come online sooner than that, but we will see some reductions in the near future. Um, so we put up these monitoring sites, and right off the bat, we realized when the winds were from the north, northwest, we started to see uh, power plant plumes come across. Indicators of that would be sulfur dioxide concentrations and uh, the mercury. So what, this, what these data show you is when the winds are out of the north, this is the wind direction here, zero degrees is north, Okay, so winds are out of the north. There's three different portions of this graph in which the winds are out of the north. The concentrations of um, reactive gaseous mercury, also known as gaseous oxidized mercury, the name it has evolved over time. Uh, this is the transition slide. From this point on, I call it, I call it GOM for gaseous oxidized mercury. Uh, sulfur dioxide are these blue uh, colored uh, symbols on here. Gaseous oxidized mercury are the red symbols. So when the winds are out of the north, low concentrations of gaseous oxidized mercury and sulfur dioxide, okay? When the winds are out of the west-northwest from 250 to about uh, 320 degrees west-northwest, we're seeing elevated concentrations of sulfur dioxide. 20 ppb is a big number for our site. That's what you see here during these time periods. And the reactive gaseous mercury concentrations go from basically zero up to about 100, 150. So we're seeing this reactive gaseous mercury plume come across with the uh, SO2. Winds shift to the north, the concentrations drop down. During the same period, the winds went back to the west-northwest. We see these elevated concentrations and it drops down. Uh, interesting, uh, uh, nice comparison there with wind direction and concentration. Very clear, you see these power plants to the west of us. So we're in a pretty good location to look at uh, emission patterns and emission trends. And so we're set up, we're making these measurements, we're adding a few more things in the future, looking at some of the Marcellus Shale um, emissions um, that are going to go up to our site. But these are the patterns now. So I'll give you some patterns on how the emissions have changed over time. Back in, in the early 1990s, um, these are the U.S. emissions. The emissions of mercury in the U.S. were about 250 tons per year. Okay? large numbers. The three main sources, medical waste, municipal waste combustors, and power plants. <clears throat> Controls were implemented on these two sources. The emissions dropped down from about 250 to about 150 tons per year in 2002. A little bit, a little bit the more of a decrease in 2005. Now our control efforts are going to be placed on the utility coal boilers and other types of power plants as well. So we're going to trigger and focus in on these sources, so the future controls are going to try to lower the emissions from these sources um, so that we achieve what we'd like to see as a 90% reduction in the future. That's the direction that we're heading. Okay, so these are just kind of lumped together data. You can go into the EPA <coughs> database. You can pull out the emissions from this database. These are emissions from power plants now, only this particular sector. So these are power plant emissions of mercury, and mercury compounds, because there's three different compounds that can be released from these power plants. You can see that there is a downward trend. Um, 2,000 emissions, 140, um, you know, maybe 135 in 2008, so decreasing downward. And then 2009, 2010, 2011, a big jump. 2011 emissions are reported at about 100,000 pounds. So we're seeing a decrease and mercury. Now, these are national emissions. These are all the data that are in the database. You can break this out uh, by the various uh, by the various states, and that's what we did. These are Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. There's subtle differences in the patterns here, but generally there's a downward trend. Um, sometimes they go down. If you look at Pennsylvania, they went down in 2006. Um, some controls were were. Uh, uh, well, there was, they were anticipating some applying some controls to these power plants. Uh, the rules were vacated, so then, you know, uh, uh, the emissions changed. They went back up for a little bit, and then they've decreased in anticipation of the next round of pollution controls. So there are these downward patterns across all these sites. Each state is different. You can look at them on your own a little bit later. Or online, look at West Virginia. It stayed pretty stable for this six-year period, 2009, 2010, they decreased. So the point I'm trying to make is there have been decreases in the emissions over the last decade. Maryland leads the way in the, in the emissions, by the way. Look at what Maryland did in 2010. They made an incredible reduction in their, uh, their mercury emissions. So there's a downward trend. 
the point I'm trying to make now is, is that downward trend reflected in the um, amount of mercury that we see being deposited back to the Earth's surface in both wet deposition and dry deposition. So we have three monitoring sites in the state. We have our site out here in western Maryland. There's a site at Beltsville, and there's a site at uh, uh, Edgewater at Smithsonian. So there are wet deposition data for those sites. Um, we have some of the longest records. We worked with Rob Mason when he was here. When Joel Baker was around, Rob was around. We started making some measurements in the late 1990s. Um, these are wet deposition measurements made at, made at the same site. We picked it up in 2000 and kept it going. Um, we then had uh, some other programs come on board to start making some of the measurements in conjunction with us so we can do some, some other things. But you can see there was a big jump. We went from 250 tons per year down to about 140. Um, it is reflected in the wet deposition rate. We only, there's, another, there's another year of data here and shows pretty much the same thing, real high deposition back here in the early to late 1990s. And then things have decreased quite a bit over this last 10 year period. But not a clear downward trend. You know, things are bouncing around a little bit. Maybe the last few years, you're starting to see some low years interspersed with some high years. But not a real clear downward trend like I showed you in the um, emission patterns. The other side of the story is the, is the gaseous forms, the particulate forms of mercury that are released from power plants. Um, this was the wet deposition. This is the gaseous forms that are going to be dry deposited from the atmosphere. There are three different forms. They behave differently. Gaseous elemental mercury um, stays around the atmosphere for a long time. It's not very reactive. Gaseous oxidized mercury, very reactive. will stick onto everything. Particulate mercury, very fine particles. Um, they behave different from the other two. But they're usually present in the atmosphere a lot shorter time period than uh, gaseous elemental mercury. So we have five minute data for each of these species in the atmosphere. Going back to May 2005, and I just checked it a few minutes ago online with Dropbox and things are working well. Our camera isn't working well. We have a camera out there too to tell us what the weather conditions are like and what the, what the air quality is. But every five minutes since 2005, I've been collecting data. We've been collecting, but mostly me, so I'm very busy collecting these data. <laughs> Nothing changes except for the seasonal patterns um, in the uh, ambient air concentrations of gaseous elemental mercury. You can see when we first started this, we used to get larger, uh, higher peaks, higher concentration peaks up to about three or four uh, nanograms per cubic meter. We don't see that anymore. We see the same seasonal patterns, and we're actually working on trying to explain some of these seasonal patterns. Um, this is the gaseous oxidized mercury, real sticky form of mercury, real high peaks to begin with, um, you know, up to three, four hundred uh, concentrations in picograms per cubic meter. We still see these peaks from time to time. The last couple of years, we don't see these really large peaks anymore. So those big peaks are still gone. We still see elevated concentrations of gaseous oxidized mercury. Maybe it's maybe even a little clearer here what's happening over the last few years. We don't have these really large peaks anymore and the particulate mercury concentrations, things may have settled down a little bit. Concentrations um, are actually, on average, the concentrations are quite a bit lower right now than they were when we, well, when we first started this, these measurements. The orange bars here are the gaseous oxidized mercury annual averages, 2006 through 2011. The blue bars are the particulate mercury. So I showed you here, 2006 was actually our lowest average year. Concentrations went up a little bit, uh, peaked in 208, and they started to decrease. Okay, and this pattern, it's just such a coincidence, or it may be uh, indicative of where the sources are, uh, but this pattern is very similar to what you see in Pennsylvania, which is the site north of us, which had those big, huge red circles indicating really uh, important sources of, of atmospheric mercury. These are the Pennsylvania data, just pulled out for that same time period. You can see 2006, they lowered their emissions, a little bit higher at 7 and 8, and then it decreased in 2009. It mirrors the concentrations that we see um, at our site in these forms of mercury. So, just to wrap and summarize what I've said, is that power plant emissions clearly have decreased um, from the 1990s through today. Um, we saw a big jump in the decrease in wet deposition um, at our site. 
um, from 1996 to 2000, not a real clear trend from that point on whether they're increasing or decreasing. The last couple of years, though, they've been lower than some of the previous measurements, but not a real consistent downward trend. No change in the atmospheric concentrations of GEM, annual averages. Um, we do see lower average gaseous oxidized mercury and particulate mercury concentrations. And they seem to mirror the uh, power plant um, emissions in Pennsylvania.